All right. It's not raining and I am not going to sit in here in front of this camera again. I'm going outside. So I think I'm going to go put some warmer clothes on and I'm going to go up the road, hike down to the falls. And I'm going to throw my GoPro in the river and see if there's any steelhead in there. And so I'll do four or five casts there and then I will take my quad around to a different zone and down to that familiar spot in the river, see what's going on down there and get some voices heard down there, see what's going on. That's what I'm going to do right now. Back in a few. This is how you come down. Look at this elk trail. Ooh. Wow. That is some traffic. Well, I'm going to take a few casts here. Oh, maybe. I don't know. 
and why not? That is a lot of water. A lot. That big, uh, great big boulder you guys probably seen in the past videos is, is over there. <laughs> and it's under about, I don't know, it's probably two feet of water over top of it. And that rock's what? About waist high from the bottom. So yeah, there's a lot of, there's too much water. So I went up farther up to see if I could take a few casts with my uh, GoPro and see if there's any steelhead in that pool, but it's raging. And I know better, it's a waste of time to try that with this thing. And I don't want to lose this GoPro. These are expensive little bastards. So, so I'm going to go straight to getting voices heard. And i got to keep my wits about me because Sarah and Ruby are going on their daily walk and I think they're going to come down here and try to scare me. Because <laughs> it's easy to sneak up on me because you, you go along the flat ground right here and then it just drops down. So I can't see anybody that's coming or dogs or whatever until they're right in front of my face. So I'll keep that in mind. And she's going to be doing her... Uh, she's going to be doing her... I'm uh, doing this rod. Her, uh, her food deliveries today. She's really, really excited about that. And uh, just so you know, Sarah used to be one of those moms. Right? She used to be one of those moms. She had a guy that decided that breaking bones on her body in front of her children was okay. And still loves, apparently still loves heroin today. So that's the kind of guys that are out there at times fathering children and not paying to support them. And there's a lot of women out there with babies young children who aren't getting any kind of support whatsoever and by themselves. You know the story, there's, it's endless. What I'm saying is we've all been there, we've all felt the pinch and a lot of people are feeling it still today and uh, I'm just letting you know that Sarah's been there and she is uh, a little emotional about this in a good way and this is her latest mission. Alright, there we go, that's all I got to say on that. Also sent the Ketchum study some funds this morning and uh, this channel is doing a lot of good a lot of good a lot of good now uh, I guess I better sit down and get comfy right sit down and get comfy haven't been down here for a while I wonder what's been going on around here Feels pretty tame. Sarah's agreed to get up early tomorrow morning and go steelhead fishing. How exciting is that? And I think we'll take Ruby too. Now, enough of this. Now let's get into it. Um, I had one. We're gonna get into some older emails, I think. Uh, and I, but I have one recent one because it's a, uh, a reply to a video we just heard, an email we just read, and it was read a long time ago. But it's at one hell of a experience, the elk hunter, and he wrote us in again. Subject: Utah elk hunt and added facts. Steve, I'm sending you more info about the story I sent about the elk hunt. I sent you a shortened version because I was afraid I would send a long, overly detailed story, and after you read it. I realized I had written it very poorly. As I wrote, the tag was only good for five days. The first four days was uneventful. My son's, my friend's son hiked with me for four days. We saw lots of elk, but no mature bulls. The last day I was making it up the mountain in the dark, I told you I felt pressure. It was a fear. I had never felt hunting except for maybe when I was young and a friend and I got lost for a few hours. Right before I shot my elk, I saw that nine-ish foot silver slash gray sabe duck behind a spruce tree. My mind was briefly confused. There are no wildlife that color to live here. I've rarely seen hunters in the area because it's a long hike from public access areas. My hike was relatively short because of my private land access. I only saw it briefly, but it had to duck slightly under a limb and it was on two legs, plus I saw it through my scope, not with my naked eyes. I left this part out in the original story. The elk was on a very steep slope where he died. 
he had fallen downhill, but his antlers had kept him from going further down the slope. When I got back to the cabin to get my meat pack, I brought a sawzall and removed his head and lower legs and rolled him down the slope quite a ways down to where the meadow flattened out. Side note, I've done that too. And a lot of people will squawk and say, oh, you're disrespecting it. You're going to bruise it up. Just so I'm going to chop off those comments early. You can't bruise any meat ever that's dead. It needs to have a heart pumping. You can't bruise without your blood pumping. Okay, you guys? So rolling that carcass down the mountain doesn't do anything to it in a negative way. It doesn't. I've done it dozens of times. Exact same move. I've done it, all right? So, so uh, keep your shit straight. Now, and rolled him down the slope quite a ways down to where the meadow flattened out. It saved me quite a bit of hiking and put the elk way out in the wide open. This may, be a, may have been why my elk wasn't stolen. The pressure I felt all day while I was packing it out, as you may mention, may have been the feeling of being watched, but I felt threatened. My dad, with a bum knee, made one trip, and, I, and like I said, I packed him a light load and didn't let him go back up. I asked him if he felt threatened. He said he didn't feel anything. We built our cabin there in the 80s and had no events really except when I was hiking in the mid 80s. I was hiking up a long meadow that had a small stream in it that only ran during snow melt or heavy rains. And all of a sudden, I heard the scream like a woman being brutally murdered, like has been reported here. It echoed down the meadow. It happened twice. I got the heck out of there. I was a mile from camp and everyone in camp heard it and rode it off as a mountain lion. It was the wrong pitch. And the scream was blood curdling and loud and came from something with large lungs. When I was hunting up there, I came across a Bigfoot carved in an aspen tree on a trail, probably a half mile from my sighting. It was an impressive car carving and five or six feet tall. If I can find the picture I took of it, I will submit it. It will be off of film. Oh, sorry, went off of Okay, I get it. So you had a film camera. Once again, I never heard of Sabes of different colors until I found this channel, the pressure, and all the other things others have experienced. Thanks again, Steve. I will stay anonymous because I, as I said, my wife worked for the government, and I totally don't trust any of them. I'll probably have black choppers and surveillance visiting tonight. <laughs> yeah, no shit. I work on animals every day, and I know what I saw. I know, I know you know what you saw, and I absolutely believe you, without a doubt. Thanks for that follow-up, man. I'm really stoked and glad you're still here too. All right, and you're right. A lot of people are learning a lot of things around from here. A lot. It's funny. I was reading about the scream. I my ears started zinging on my right side of my head my hair whatever I'm all good anyway Love that shit anyway I wonder if you've been talking to anybody openly in your hunting circles as well I wonder since uh since you've come forward here All right, I'm getting a little tension's been drawn. All right, let's get into the next one. My story, little one. My name is Marilyn Lenz, son Sean and husband Bob. 2001, Sean was taking us with his wife and two-year-old son to Eureka, California from Grants Pass, Oregon, on a dirt road through the Redwoods. I was in the back seat along with my grandson and his mother. Sean was driving and Bob was also in the front seat. And all of a sudden, Sean and Bob looked at each other and said, What the F was that? I looked and saw what looked like a little, maybe, four-year-old boy with an oversized sweatshirt on about three feet tall. I told them what I was seeing, but they didn't look. Whatever they saw, I'd never seen them look so surprised in my life. I looked again. And the little boy's sweatshirt was dark in color with sleeves down past his knees and a straight pointy top on his head, which looked strange to me. 
He was the same height as the bushes, and he was going back and forth like he was trying to figure out how to get through them. In the back of my mind, I knew it had to be a Bigfoot that Sean and Bob saw, but to this day they won't say what it was. We were about a city block away when these figures showed themselves. Figures, uh? I mean, it's more than one. By the time we got to the place I'd seen the little one, I told Sean to slow down. I wanted to see if there was a place where the bushes were stomped down. I didn't see him go through or be picked up. Sean stomped on the gas when we got to that place instead of slowing down. And this is on the right side of the road when I was sitting on the left in the vehicle on the left side in the vehicle. What I found strange was a woman was sitting in a van on the left side of the road reading a book and never even lifted her head when we went by. The van was on a cliff leading down to a creek, maybe 10 feet to 20 feet down. So whatever it was, the men saw was coming from that creek. About a decade later, we were camping, and it brought all five of Sean's boys with us a day or so before Sean and Alicia came up. We were telling stories to the boys, and I told his youngest about the little Bigfoot I'd seen, and, gave, and I gave him details of what it looked like. When Sean and Alicia got up there, Caleb went to their camp trailer. Pretty soon, I saw just what I had a decade ago. So let me read that again, smoother. When Sean and Alicia got up there, Caleb went to their camp trailer, and pretty soon, I saw just what I had a decade ago. This time, it was Caleb with his dad's sweatshirt on and the hood pulled up, except just like I figured before, on top of his head was rounded. I just ver it just verified it to me. It was a toddler Sasquatch, what I, which I had seen, and the oversized sweatshirt was just the shape of its body. I had seen a night picture of one before that showed a crown on top of its head, from the front of its head to the back, like a ridge. I couldn't make out any feet, hands, or face on what I'd seen, and I hope this makes sense to you. Thank you for reading this, Marilyn. Marilyn, I absolutely appreciate you sending in that honest experience that you had and it's too bad but it's you know what you can't you can't shit on anybody for reacting the way they do right everybody reacts different and uh that reminds me hitting the gas instantly reminded me of my old farrier who lived in still lives in pemberton british columbia he uh when he was driving to mount curry where i made the video with kelly down the man that community he uh as soon as he crossed the bridge, the Birkenhead River, one of these beings ripped across the road in front of his truck. And he said what scared him the most was how, not only how huge it was, but how fast it moved. And he said, every time I get to that point of the road, still today, I hit the gas. And, and he ripped past that spot, right? So many people have seen them there. But that's a common reaction afterwards. And it's also a common reaction to not want to talk about it. Unfortunately, that's how a lot of us are built. Who's next? What's next? This is titled Forest Giants in Suburban Massachusetts. Hello, Steve. My name is Larry. I'm a 58 year old independent conservative. I'm not a hunter, though, not against the idea. I love. I do love to go tent camping in New Hampshire's White Mountains, which are about six hours' drive from my home. The ironic thing is, my two saw-based stories didn't happen there. I live in a small town in central Massachusetts on a rural route in a quiet apartment complex that is set back from the road. Lots of houses and small businesses around here, but no traffic and very low crime. It's a nice place to live. Not much real forest, though, just a few patches of woods. I am lucky my location, as there is a river flowing right past my home and there is a huge tree-bordered field spreading out from the viewpoint of my recessed porch on the third floor. From there, all I can see is nature. That thing recording, it better be. Yeah, it is. Had that happen before, it's a piss off, sorry. <clears throat> from there, all I can see is nature, thank God, except for maybe two or three small foams nestled in the trees on the far side of the field, maybe 400 yards out. First story. 
in September 2014 while out for an afternoon stroll on an overcast day on a formerly public walking path at the West Hill Dam in Uxbridge, M.A. U-X-B-R-I-D-G-E-M-A. A gated Army Corps of Engineers water control site. My teenage niece and I had a harrowing experience at the edge of the woods at the termination of the path. The entire episode went like this. There were no other people around that I was aware of. And as we came to a T-junction, and we're trying to decide whether to go right or left on other paths or straight through the brush barrier into the woods, I began to hear what seemed to be heavy footfalls about 40 feet away from us, inside the wood line directly in front of us. I stopped, pointed, and shushed my niece with a finger to my lip, and her eyes got as big as saucers. I'm sure mine did too. It sounded like a big person tromping through the brush and snapping sticks. We couldn't see through the thick growth at the wood line, but we heard deep, raspy breathing. It didn't smell anything. There are no bears, moose, or cattle farms anywhere near there, and the small local deer do not sound like that. I quietly asked my niece if she was hearing all this, and, and as she started to answer, the movement stopped, and there was a sudden, huge whoa sound in the direction of the stomping. It had a depth of bass in it that jolted us, like the unexpected lowing of a bull standing over your shoulder, but with articulation to it, like a word. Kind of like, I don't even want to say it out loud around here. <laughs> Wah, or something. Neither of us knew much about Sasquatch in those days, but I figured they probably existed. At that moment, I couldn't think of anything else that it might have been. We turned on the spot and walked back out the way we came, quickly. We heard nothing further. I imagine it was standing there watching us go. It was not about to look back. And just before we reached the trailhead, we passed by a middle-aged lady in a warm-up suit, out speed walking in the direction we were coming from. I hailed her and warned her that there was something in the woods back there. She paused, seeming concerned for a brief moment, and then relaxed and smiled and said, Oh yeah? We stared at her, agape, but she resumed walking, yelling back over her shoulder to us, It's okay, it's harmless, as if she knew. We didn't pursue her, and we never went back there for a walk again. That facility has since been knocked down, and you now need special permission to walk there, and only in approved areas. Suspicious and creepy. Our story is still retold today. Most of my family believes it, but a couple of them write it off with dumb explanations. Second story, and the reason I'm writing you today. To preface, I have been fascinated by the Bigfoot, Sasquatch, Sabe, Bukwas, etc. people ever since my encounter in 2014. So I have done a lot of reading and have been watching the better YouTube channels, especially yours. To be PC, I have come to refer to them as forest giants. I can say that. I'm convinced they exist. So to the story. Late last night, early morning, February 11th, 2024, I couldn't sleep and I was out on my porch smoking a pipe in the chill air at about 2 a.m. EST. I was leaning on the fence rail enjoying the peaceful whisper of the little five-foot waterfall that is about 200 yards to my three o'clock just out of sight. Under the partial moonlight I could see most of the big field and surrounding tree line. I could see the glimmering river under the moon through the leafless trees. It was so serene. My porch light was the only artificial illumination I could see, and I suppose it highlighted me in the dark as if I were on a Broadway stage. I've been thinking about camping, and so these beings came to mind. No doubt. I started wondering, wondering how far away the nearest one was to me, and then, unbelievably, there was a sudden, violent knock, like a baseball bat against a tree, shattering the silence. It echoed off the distant houses. It seemed to come over by the water, maybe a hundred feet to my two o'clock. I almost pissed myself, no lie. And five seconds later, there was another one from the same direction. My knees almost buckled. I saw nothing out there, smelled nothing but pipe smoke. There was no mind speak or forced feeling of terror, other than being scared shitless about a sudden noise. But I knew what it was. 
There's no question in my mind. So, I somehow found the strength to speak out loud. If you're there, I do not need to see you. I just want to be left in peace. I will not tell anyone I heard you. There was no further activity, so after about a minute, I came back into the apartment and sat quietly in the dark with a cat in my lap until I felt calm enough to try to sleep. I wondered if I may have been tagged that day 10 years ago, but I see no reason why it would be of any importance to these beings. My niece has had no further experiences. I hope that I'm not breaching my promise by emailing you this by I hope that I am not breaching my promise by emailing the story to you, but after all, I did not mention the name of my town. Anyway, it's not like anyone's gonna come looking for the being, and besides, it might be a year or more before you find this email and read it. <laughs> not today. <laughs> Just kidding. So, now the concern starts. After 15 years living here alone with my cats, I'll be listening for any sort of knock or stick break every time I go for a smoke on the porch at night. I love my place and I won't let something like this scare me off. My rationale is that if they can be here, they can be anywhere. So what good would moving do? Due to the state of the world we live in, I always keep a 12-gauge Stevens security shotgun by the porch door with three number four cartridges and two deer slugs in it. Stealthy intruders. I just said you guys are probably going to scare me. And I felt a burning by my ear a minute ago, too, and the hair on the back right there. Bubs, what are you doing? Hi, Bubs. Hi, Bobby. Yeah, come here, come here. No, I want to jump. I guess that's a good thing. Buggers. <laughs> but you don't want to jump in front of the camera? No. Why not? Look. Look, here's my wild visitors. Hello, everyone. Hello. <laughs> All shy. Ruby's smelling other animals big time. Bubba! Bobby! Did you come and visit Daddy? You didn't even bark or anything, okay? Hey, hey Bubs, are you having fun? Are you smelling all the new smells? Is there animals here? Huh? Wish she had her nose on something. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah. straight down. Well, there's a game trail right here, right? And there's still some, the bears, the big male bears come out. Still. The bears? Oh, they'll be. There can be big male bears out all winter. Really? Not they'll. They won't be out all winter, but they'll run around and come out of their holes periodically and cruise around. Especially grizzly bears. She'll let you know. Grizzly bears? Yeah, there's no grizzlies here. You know that. All right. All right. Well, lucky for me, they didn't intentionally try to scare the crap out of me. It's funny, I had that tingle in my head earlier, right? Sorry about the interruption. Here we go. Alright. Talking about the knock. It echoed off the distant houses. It seemed to come, to come from over by the water. Maybe a hundred feet to my two o'clock. I almost pissed myself, no lie. And five seconds later, there was another one in the same direction. And he's almost buckled. I saw nothing out there, smelled nothing but pipe smoke. There was no mind speak or a forced feeling of terror other than being scared shitless by the sudden noise. But I knew what it was. There was no question in my mind. So I somehow found the strength to speak out loud. If you're there, I don't need to see you. I just want to be left in peace. I will not tell anyone that I heard you. There was no further activity, so after about a minute, I came back into the apartment, sat quietly in the dark with my cat on my lap until I felt calm enough to try to sleep. I wondered if I may have been tagged that day ten years ago, but I see no reason why it would be any of, of any importance to these beings. My niece has had no further experiences. I hope that I'm not breaching my promise by emailing this story to you, but after all, I did not mention the name of my town. Anyway, it's not like anyone is going to come looking for the beer. And besides, it might be a year or more before you find this email and read it. Okay, I already read that. Damn it. So now the concern starts. 
After 15 years living here alone with my cats, I'll be listening for any sort of a knock or stick break every time I go out for a smoke on the porch at night. I love my place and I won't let something like this scare me off. My rationale is, <clears throat> excuse me, if they can be here, they can be anywhere. So what good would moving do? Due to the state of the world we live in, I always keep our regret that. I hope I never have to see one if it works on house climbing Sabe. I would never want to hurt one anyway. Maybe they know that. I would subscribe to the whole Nephilim thing. Paranormal abilities, maybe. Aliens, I don't know. Who knows? In my reckoning, they may be big, feral, and weird, but they are God's creatures, no less than we are. Thanks for sharing my encounter, Steve. Maybe someone somewhere will gain some insight from them. The suburbs are apparently not off limits to the forest giants. Rock on, my friend, and stay free. Larry? Cugini. God, I hope I didn't butcher your name, Larry. C-U-G-I-N-I. -I. It's okay to use my name, nothing to gain or lose. Okay, man, I got you. Appreciate that. And there's not, as you know, there's nothing nothing much new reported in that one to what we haven't had reported a bunch of times, but uh, as soon as you said where it was, so what rang to my brain was recently when I went to that, I went to a, a big buck, um, year-end horn antler contest at a hunting and angling store in Campbell River, River Sportsman. And then we, my friend and his daughter and I, we went for lunch. And when we were driving to go for lunch, I took notice of where the big, it's either a superstore or a save on foods, whatever. And it has the river right behind it. The big river that comes out into the ocean is right behind it. And it's right there. I mean, it's right there in town. It's a small city, almost. But the, what I'm mentioning is, is I think a year ago or so, someone emailed us the frickin' footprints in the snow traveling right behind, from behind that grocery store, right to the parking lot and along a park fence. And some homeless people saw it. And they sent us the, uh, by the time they got the, the photos done, the tracks were somewhat melted out, but the stride was like frickin' six feet. They're straight in line and they're melted out and they're huge. But what what I want to point out is the river. Right? Something's up with rivers. Without a doubt. Without a frickin' doubt. Something's up with rivers. And either traveling or showing up. Especially where uh, showing up where you would think for a million years, but you your experience just added to that Note taken for me in the shelf in the back of my brain the rivers, right? All right, here we go Appreciate you sending that in man. I appreciate you sending that in Who's next? All right, this one's not too long. It's all I do is I check to see how long they are, and <laughs> whatever, uh, how long I am into my sit down. This is titled, Giving Permission to Quote, Dog Men, End Quote, and the Big Guys. Steve, I'm not a story writer. I couldn't spin a yarn that was convincing if I had to. I am a truth seeker. I have been my whole life. And naturally, I'll only talk about what I know and have seen with my own two eyes and have experienced with this mortal shell that we often refer to as a temple created for the Most High to abide in. I need to get this out of the way first concerning your comments on the dog creatures. You say these beings outclass us, and of course you're right. If you say these beings wanted us, they could have us at a moment's notice without any challenge, and of course you're right. But in, your, in our history books, in the guidebooks of the supernatural, that is, there are rules. Such as, you have to agree to let in a good spirit or bad spirit. You have to use your free will given to you by the Creator for things not of this realm to be lawfully allowed to interact with you. Example, if you want a relationship with Yeshua, you have to ask him into your life and willfully give him permission. At this point, I can hear someone saying, what about a haunting or someone being demonically oppressed or having a big guy follow at home? 
it doesn't matter. The interaction with entities not of this realm is a form of permission. You could have a family member who gave something permission before you were even born, or watch or listen to things that have been demonically influenced that will definitely open doors that you now have to close using Yeshua's name. I'm not sure if the big guy is a good being or a bad, to be honest, I don't know. But I'm positive they have to follow free will rules as we, man, have been given dominion over this realm from the Creator. If the gentleman who heard the beautiful music playing would have made the decision with their free will to walk into that trap, they would have given up their rights and, and very possibly could have been killed. <clears throat> Excuse me. But he instead chose to fire off rounds at the direction of the noise and followed his inner voice telling him there was danger. Either way, we are free will beings and things in an angelic realm and dimensions we don't understand have to follow these rules. I can give you one example after the other in the Dead Sea Scrolls and in the guidebook of the supernatural. It's all the same. Every time they mess with Yahweh's creation, Without permission, the punishment is more than they can bear. I've seen and heard a lot in my 50 years, all the way back to when I was in diapers. I can recall the things I've heard and seen, but I'll stick to this channel's topic, unless you ask me to send in other topics. October 23, I was taking corn down to my creek where I feed the deer. My wife and I are very passionate about animals and creation and being at one with it. I slowly walked up the edge of the creek a few steps and then paused a few minutes at a time just listening, then noticed about six deer, 50 yards or so, eating in a clearing. So my intent was to try to get as close to them as I could before they saw me, just having some fun with them. What I was not expecting was for a monstrous being that cloaked the left half of his body that was facing the deer so that only I could see him. It moved on all fours at an unconscionable speed, less than three feet from the pack of deer, and they couldn't see him, although they definitely could hear him. The deer were extremely confused because they could see leaves moving and dust being kicked up off the ground, but there was nothing there except from my perspective. My home is backed up against a forest that no one hunts, and everybody leaves alone, so they have plenty of privacy there, I'm sure. I seen him slash her again around 3 in the morning. I walked out of my workshop and could hear something big tearing through the trees. So I walked onto my wraparound deck and to shine the light into the woods and I could see approximately 10 to 11 foot massive individual around 80 yards away. We stared at each other for 5 or 6 minutes. Holy shit. 5 or 6 minutes. Time that on your watch. Go. Five or six minutes in sighting scenario for anything is days. No bad intentions or bad thoughts, just acknowledging one another. When I first bought my property, I went to all four corners of it and asked yes, Yeshua to bless it and keep it safe and not allow any evil onto it. For that to change, I'd have to bring something onto my land that gave them rights to be there, or I would have to verbally give them permission. The things that my stepson may watch and listen to in secret could give them permission without me even knowing about it. I say that because we just now had a problem that I had to rebuke in Jesus' name, and after years of being there in peace, things are speeding up on this planet, we are coming closer to the event horizon that the guidebook of the supernatural speaks of. The evidence for this is all over social media and the news, such as the government's acknowledgement of other world entities, i.e. fallen angels and their offspring. I could take you to 15 different normal people's channels on social media. They are seeing portals in their backyards with entities coming in and out of them all over the planet now. The mainstream media have been giving permission from their bosses, i.e. the New World Order government, to start dripping some of these truths. If you want a 50,000 foot view of how this is all come to pass and what's coming next, start with Alistair Crowley's involvement with our government and rituals they perform. They do a deep dive into CERN, 
the Hadron Collider and the temple that they built, CERN, on top of. The event horizon is coming quickly and our governments are ushering it in. Religion and race, religion and race, and left versus right, is a way to keep the masses arguing with each other instead of standing together to take back our power. We all need to seek the face of our Creator and ask Him to prove Himself to us and guide and direct us, and He will every time. The more of us who have a close relationship with Him, the more we will be linked together as one force standing against a tsunami of evil coming at us, and the longer we can hold this and the longer we can hold this back. We all have our place and role in this life if we choose to accept it. I believe you accepted yours, Steve, and I think I thank you sincerely for your bravery and strength to stand in the face of adversity. Yahweh bless you and your family and protect and keep you. Sincerely, Sarge. Hosi, Hosi 4-6, quote, my people perish for lack of knowledge. There you go. Words from a wise man. All right, take from away, you will leave it. A lot of listening I've been doing with people I listen to, wise people, intelligent people. Uh, oh, what's that guy's name? Billy Carson, I believe his name was. I listened to a little while ago and what his his take on on some of these uh, topics and verses wrote is, you know, he, he talks of what he feels would be possibly uh, the the next coming of Christ and what he believes, and he got emotional about it when I when I listened to him that video was, and bear with me, I know there's a lot of people out there who shun the Bible in these stories, and that's fine, take from what you will, leave it. Um, what he tends to feel and believe is that once we all choose to see the light, the bright light, right? Meaning the good. Once we all have good in here at the same time, that is when we all come together and that's when everything changes and that would be what he perceives as the next coming of Christ, right? Is when we all see the light and focus on the good together. And you don't have to be, uh, you don't have to be a member of a church to be able to do that, right? You don't have to be what some people, like I've had, it's funny, I've had people who are hardcore, hardcore members of churches. Some young guys working for me, kind of, I found it kind of comical because I remember they say, uh, you know, you're not going to go to, you're not going to go to heaven just for doing good things all your life, you know, just so you know. <laughs> I'd be like, I'm not? <laughs> what do you mean? He says, you're not. Not until you accept them, you know, accept God into your life, join this church. You're not going to go to, you're not going to go to heaven, you know. You can't just keep doing good things like this all your life and go to heaven. What am I getting at? I got a little off track there. I just remember that one day at work and had a couple of young guys working for me. We had good conversations all day. But I do, I do, I do believe and I do agree that, you know, we had another person say a while back, well, you have to, you have to be shown all the leaks in a boat before you can patch them up and float it. Right? And I do believe right now that is, oh, is it, what the hell? Is that a, I think there's an eagle feather sticking out of that stump that wasn't there. Okay, hold on, I'll take the camera over there in a second. Are you sure that's an eagle feather sticking out of the stump? Upside me, the woods way that was there. That wasn't there. Anyway, uh, where was I? Um, where was I? Hold on. See that? I think it's a mink. Oh, there's two of them. Two mink, no way. What are the chances of that?
Tell you what, when it rains, it, when it rains, it pours, right? All right. All right. Full on uh, double attention grabbers there. Where was I? Mm -mm -mm. Sorry, you guys. Completely lost myself there. Doesn't happen very often, does it? Anyway. I think I was saying I do believe that we are being shown all the darkness and all the evil in the planet today. We are. And uh, as, as long as the numerous people who are brave and they have substantial followers on social media, they continue to point out the truths nonstop and, and it's making headway um, big time. We have to listen to each other, right? This, we only have each other. But we have to listen to each other. We have to focus on good. And we have to focus on being honest. Right? Remember I said earlier, if, if we could raise our children to believe that being dishonest should be regarded as absolutely humiliating, imagine what that would do to our community, all communities, the whole planet. If we, the children were raised to be honest at all costs, be honest, right? Because right now, people who are in the position of so-called leadership, which they aren't, they're in the, they are in the position of opportunists right now, but none of them are honest. And if you want to be in the position of what you might call the fathers and the mothers of all the children, the children being the people in society, you lead by example, right? And all they're doing is lying. Lying and stealing. That's, that is what basically 100% of the people in Western governments, for sure anyway today, all they're doing is lying and stealing, non-stop. So what the hell are you gonna get in community when that is who is supposed to be? Throwing down the example, lying and stealing is in the position of what should be true leadership right now, I'm babbling. Anyway, absolutely lost my frickin' concentration. I gotta go uh, check this. Pretty sure that's an eagle feather sticking in that stump and it was not there when I got here. Anyway, I gotta get out of here, I gotta go. I'm babbling, I'm rambling, I've, I've completely lost my focus and uh, I gotta get home and carry on to this day. It's a good day today. A good day from all the kindness, right? The kindness that we're generating this channel is spreading kindness and all of these children we're about to receive this food today. Are going to see the bright light and the kindness, right? It's just it's all kindness being spread. These children are going to see that. So this lessons for them early in life. It's people helping each other in community, right? Keep it going. Keep spreading it. You may not have something to give to somebody, but you got kind words you can share, right? There's all different ways of being kind and spreading it. Making it go rampant. I'm babbling. Let's go check out this frickin' feather. What the hell? I'll be back later on. <clears throat> huh. Well, it's not a fresh one. <laughs> Could a human being have placed it there and I missed it? Maybe. But I was just right beside that stump when it first came in. So, there you go. All right, time to get out of here. Do a slow scan. The hell of it.
All right. So, um, while editing this was a little confusing, I had a few interruptions there. I just had a couple weird feelings. Whatever is what it is. <clears throat> but I'm gonna <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> I'm gonna point something out here that I came across while editing, and I wrote down the time. Let me video. It is at 28 minutes and 16 seconds. It blatantly sounds like something blows on the camera. Which for me is very odd. It's gonna be it's gonna mean nothing to internet world on YouTube, but uh, Sarah and Ruby were long gone. And the camera is roughly, I don't know, seven feet in front of me, six feet in front of me, not a breeze, nobody in front of me. And I'm gonna play that sound again right here, louder. All right, if you want to go back to where it was, I didn't hear, hear I don't think I was sensing anything then. It, everything, everything it was a weird day. It was just a weird day today at the river. That's all I can say. And uh, I'm going to share the sound with you and you tell me what you think it is. And I will more than likely have a look at the comment section below this video. <laughs> what a goofy day. There's some weird shit going around around here since we moved here, but is what it is. I don't know what it was, but I know what it sure is. I sure know what it sounds like. It sounds like somebody blew on the camera. Share my story at howtohunt.com. Get it out. Talk to you later. But I knew what it was. There was no question in my mind. So I somehow found the strength to speak out loud. So I somehow found... I knew what it was. There's no question in my mind. So I somehow found the strength to speak out loud.